All right, who's your fans? Look, we're into April. Hope all you had a nice, enjoyable Easter, uh, St. Patrick's Day, April Fool's Day, uh, whatever the case is. Uh, Elite Eight, Sweet 16 weekend. Um, college basketball ain't stopping. There are no holidays. There are no. There is no time off. Maybe in the summer, maybe in the fall, uh, and not right now. Uh, things are things are happening fast and furious. Indiana had a commitment, a men's basketball commitment from a five-star player, and IU fans seem a little bit reserved about it. We noticed. We paid attention. We're going to talk about the newest Hoosier, Bryce and Tucker, as well as Mackenzie and Baco's return, latest and greatest stuff happening in the portal, and so much more here on episode 326 of the Hoosier Sound, where we are the official podcast of Indiana HQ. Our mission and goal is simple. We want to bring in-depth analysis and coverage for IU sports to as many fans as possible across a multitude of modern platforms. Recording this edition of the Hoosier Sound on Thursday, April 4th, 2024. I'm your host, Nathan Krishnan. Here with me tonight, my normal co host, Matt Lukens. Matt, Tucker is somebody who's a top 20 player. He was uncommitted the whole way. Everyone thought he was going to be G League Ignite. But then that program, that organization, that team folded, and that opened up Tucker's availability. He was long thought to be Kansas, Michigan State. He was heading down that road. But Indiana has roster spots, and they have playing time. Tucker saw an opportunity. What should Hoosier Nation know about Bryson Tucker, their newest 6'6 forward going into next season? He's an interesting five-star because he doesn't play AAU. So I don't know if, if you guys fully understand the way these recruiting rankings work but a lot of the weight of recruiting rankings isn't based off of their high school stuff that's based off of what you do in the summer so going to camps playing in AAU tournaments playing for the top teams Bryson didn't really play a lot of AAU he went to some of the camps and stuff like that in the summer but never really committed to be playing AAU ball wasn't on the UIBL circuit all that stuff so it's very interesting that he still has reached the five-star rankings, given the fact that he didn't really do the prerequisite work that is required normally to, you know, gain those ranks, right? Um, it's almost like a video game. You have to, like, level up your, your uh, your you know, your mm -hmm. visibility. Yeah, um, visibility, yeah, exactly. Just to the scouts. In those, in those points, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 actually, you know, that's how you rise up the ring. It's how somebody gets number. No, I mean, for obviously, somebody gets number one overall because they're insanely talented, but also because they're insanely talented and they look insanely talented against people that are either their age or older than them, right? Uh, and that that's how they they reach those levels. And again, Bryson didn't do that, so very interesting that he ended up there. Um, he's from the WEAC, um, which is, um, you know, Ant. Our, our our good friend always talks about how good DMV. that is for high school. Yeah, DMV, super good for high school basketball. I mean, you have the likes of like Oak Hill, um, uh, and the, God, there's people are nice up. Um, John the Fourth or John the Fifth. Yeah, the Sixth. John the Sixth. Yeah, John something. John it, Paul. I feel like there's John a Paul. John Paul. John Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul yeah. John. John Paul. Right. Sean. Sean Paul. Sean. Sean, Sean. Paul <laughs> <laughs> little sean good high school uh no so the, 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 he comes from a good league for high school basketball so it makes sense um he's a mid-range guy i'll just put this right put it this way um he's a small forward which is yeah. not something that the, the roster has had um from a talent like a high level talent perspective we haven't had a small forward this talented since og I would say, but even OG was unheralded recruit. I, it would be like Troy Williams would be the last guy that we really got that was like a high level. Yeah, because you're saying Mbako is a four. Um, Mbako's a four, and I just, Miller and, Cop not quite this level. Um, no, I mean just from a, a physically, just like overall talent perspective, we right. haven't had somebody at this level at this position since about Troy Williams. Um, and so 
I mean, he, uh, I said mid range already. Um, he really likes to shoot it from the elbow. Um, like one, two dribbles from top of the key, stop, pop, shoot, loves that. Um, not a huge dribbler of the ball. He's not a guy that's about to go ISO and take about 14 dribbles at the top of the key. It's not his game. Clearly he's played a lot of like those, you know, you've ever played one V one against your friend and you're like, all right, three dribbles max. And Bryce and Tucker is probably kills it at that drill. Cause that is exactly his game. It's one, two, three dribbles, max move past the ball. Um, I watched a little bit of his stuff at the McDonald's all American game. Yeah. Um, he looked, I mean, he looked like he was not one of the top guys that was going to get a bunch of shots, but he looked like somebody that belonged with those guys. Um, and that tells me he's going to be a dude that's going to come in. Uh, you know, he might not start day one. I, I, I'd actually personally be surprised if he started game one for the Hoosiers, but I think he's a guy that's going to definitely play a role from day one um, and possibly move into that starting lineup as the season goes on. Kind of picture um, in how Mbako's um, – overall career arc or last season his arc went from not really playable to the start of the season yeah. to averaging 18 basically at the end of the season he, he's not going to average 18 by no means on this team but bryson tucker could probably reach double digits consistently scoring wise towards the end of next season um and that'll be a huge boon for this team oh my gosh yeah absolutely just because you have not only do you have a guy that naturally is a, a, a three, but he's also, I think he has very high defensive upside because he's got good size. He's got good athleticism for a guy his size. Um, and the switchability is off the roof for him. And then also offensively, again, he's a guy that's not going to, he's not going to take a bunch of ridiculous shots so he can play a role in an offense. But if he's hot, he can take over a game. So yeah, I I really like this for the Hoosiers. I just they need to get guards, um, and that that's coming in the the transfer portal, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But I was very surprised that they they actually reached out to Bryson. But oh yeah, again, I'm I'm pretty happy with the addition. Yeah, I, I don't mean, think I don't think anybody should ever argue against getting a five star on the roster, especially mm -hmm. when you have seven roster spots left. That's it. I, I I would understand people having a little bit of a gripe with adding a freshman. Um, if the roster was full and you had one remaining roster spot left right. and you still needed a guard and you added a wing five star, yeah. you'd be like, all right, what is this roster construction? But with seven or now six scholarships mm -hmm. open, right, and really no true small forward on the roster because you That's had the guys exactly. that did play that position transfer out in Caleb Banks. Um uh, I don't I actually really, really like this. Yeah. Indiana needs this type of player. Now whether he's yeah. old or young, it's whatever. But uh this is to me a really, really good move by the Hoosiers. And it's funny, like Indiana went out and added a top 20 player. Uh and <laughs> he was an he was an incoming freshman. Yep. And the dude was playing in the McDonald's all American game uh, a few days later. And everyone was like, okay, this is good, but we need more. And, and, and I mean, they're not wrong. They're not, well, they're not wrong. I noticed <laughs> I'm noticing in real time, a real shift in, in what IU fans are paying attention to as it relates to how the roster is being built. I think as recently as a couple of years ago, Indiana added Tamar Bates. And I remember the explosive reaction to Indiana adding IMG's Tamar Bates to their roster. People loved it. It was a game-changing move. People were like, wow, this is somebody who either his freshman season could start or hey, within two years, he's definitely going to be a superstar. I mean, it didn't work out. But just from the immediate response to to the news, Hoosier fans were ecstatic. Same thing with Malik Renu when Malik Renu yep. committed late in the cycle to come play for Indiana. People were celebrating, throwing a parade. That's not what happened here. And that's very interesting to see from my standpoint. College basketball is changing before our very eyes. And I think how 
IU fans are responding to Bryson Tucker's commitment speaks loudly to that. Just like you said, Matt, there is a long, long way to go. But I am in very much agreement with you that I'm in very, very high agreement with you that this is a good move for this basketball team. You have you have spots to fill. And for me, the Tucker move was contingent on Mackenzie and Baco coming back. We're going to talk yeah. about that a little bit more later. But to me, you're not asking for Bryson Tucker to save the basketball team this upcoming season. You're not asking him to be a first team all Big Ten player. You're not asking him to try to, to maintain lottery pick status or whatever going into the next draft. This is a two-year project, yeah. at least. It's at least yeah. a two-year project. I don't I actually don't think it's going to be longer than that. I think Bryson Tucker is going to be a highly regarded player in the 2026 NBA draft, but not the 25 draft, okay? No. So so to me, this is Mackenzie and Baco's uh, game plan, the blueprint, applied to, applied to Bryson Tucker. Bryson, come in, see this out. The Big Ten is going to be a grind. You have four decent teams added to the league next season. Uh, take your time, learn a few things, learn more about basketball. And then in year two, much like we're expecting for Mackenzie and Baco coming up, rocket ship. Let's go. Let's let, let's become a let's become a super a superstar there, player. There is a problem with that though. Um and that or or with with this Bryson Tucker commitment. Because I think you and I both agree, right? It feels like a two year plan. Right, completely. Right, yeah. It feel, this feels like he comes in, figures out college basketball. Give him a year. If he if it clicks at any point in the season, awesome. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, not the end of the world because he'll have next summer to kind of work through things and then exactly. move into next year where hopefully he'll do well. The problem with that is is because the class of 2025 is so freaking good that I don't think Tucker, like if Tucker actually works out well and you get him, I don't know, let's say he he rises up the ranks and he's like a end of the first round draft pick, Mm -hmm. you know, like in the late 20s, early 30s, right? Uh, for for the, the NBA draft yeah. after next year, he's gone. Like he he is gone because he is not never going to be that high again. The twenty five and twenty six classes are so good, both you know, both domestically and internationally, that he'll never reach that that height again. Just because he's going to be older, like he could be a better player in year two than he was in year one, but have a worse draft slot because he's older. And a lot of these guys coming in have a higher ceiling than him. So yeah. I, I I think this is a really big gamble on the part of the staff to really get him going this year. Cause if they can get him out and him be a one and done this year, that'll be huge for the staff as far as, as showing, Hey, we can look what we did with Bryce Tucker. Like, like we took him from, you know, a fringe five star to 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 being a, a first round draft pick, but at the same time, if you have him on this two year plan, you're playing with fire. If he ends up actually being well, because he won't be here the year after that. I see what you're saying. I'm I'm not sold completely as far as the 2026 NBA uh, the 2026 NBA draft class is concerned. It's still so far away. I mean. The 24 class is going to be weak. The 25 class is going to be weak. I see what you're saying. Hey, maybe Bryson Tucker can play his way into that 25 class first round. Look, it's 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 quite far down the road. Um, I'm I'm a I'm just sitting here though and thinking about a couple years down the road. Oh, there also won't be COVID seniors as far as college basketball is concerned. The younger players will have a chance to really step up and showcase who they are, showcase their skills. I think a year or two of Bryson Tucker would be a really good idea. If he opts to leave, you 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 say, okay, I appreciate your time. We'll go back in the portal and find someone else. But as far as today, I want the Hoosiers to think of this as a two-year strategy. It's fascinating to see uh, a few more details as far as Bryson Tucker is concerned. Jamie Shaw, recruiting analyst with On3, says this, simply put, Bryson Tucker is a basketball player. He has great size to go with a natural basketball IQ. Nothing in his game seems to ever be rushed. He plays at his own pace. 
He understands change of pace when he makes good decisions with the ball. He is good on the ball in the half court, makes solid decisions, and doesn't put the ball in trouble off the bounce. Tucker has good length, and he is a good athlete. He can make shots with a confident pull-up. Come from a basketball family, by the way. So for those of you who uh, who remember that fun fact about Liam McNeely, well, Bryson Tucker uh, actually checks that box as well, especially considering his dad was a thousand point scorer in college basketball. Uh, plenty of offers for Tucker. We talked about how he was interested in uh, Michigan State, how he's interested in Kansas. Other offers came from Duke, from Illinois, from Iowa. So a wide range of universities and colleges wanted Bryson Tucker uh, as as uh, as a member of their team this upcoming season. And now Indiana's going to start filling in some roster spots, right? We know Mackenzie and Baco's coming back. We know that uh, the Hoosiers are very active right now and the transfer portal is concerned. Uh, as you think of 2024 impact, Matt, this upcoming season, starting in November, immediate impact. What do you think Bryson Tucker will give the Hoosiers from day one from his first game in the cream and crimson um i think he's a really underrated i mean obviously he's been shooting um ability to play defense and i was about to say he's a really underrated cutter off the ball um he's a guy that you know if you have yeah i noticed that a trey galloway and then you get a a, a combo guard let's let's just throw out a random name let's say Pin on Carlisle, mm -hmm. right? Let, let's combo uh, six foot three guard from Stanford, you know, that we're interested in. Let's say we yeah. get him, then he's the perfect kind of guy to have off ball. Because while these guys are, are out there wheeling and dealing, he can kind of run off screens, you know, then, you know, go back door. Um, he sees his guy double, he moves. He's a really good um, mover without the basketball. Um, which is something that this team has desperately needed uh, because if you watched IU play offense last year, there's a lot of standing around on the perimeter. He's a guy that's almost never going to just stand around in a corner. He's always going to be moving on offense, which is an asset. Huge asset. It's very important as far as, uh, as far as being active, being able to move off the ball, no, not, not being stagnant on the court. It's, it's massive uh, in order to have that. And now, you know, there's always uh, there's always a backstory, right? There's always uh, there's always ramifications and consequences outside of the specific move itself. Uh, this is another recruiting win for Mike Woodson, isn't it? I mean, as far as five stars, as far as late victories in the window, um, there were concerns if Mike Woodson could grab the attention of these 18 year olds. And look, yes. 18-year-olds right now aren't pushing teams into the Final Four. However, at the end of the day, a highly talented player is a highly talented player. And it more broadly speaks to Mike Woodson and the coaching staff's ability to connect with these youngsters. So, yes, Indiana has a lot more work to do. Indiana has to go out and get some third-year guys, some fourth-year guys, to really take on the playing time, the heavy lifting this upcoming season. But Galloway's back, Renew's back, Mbako's back, and Bryson Tucker is now an Indiana Hoosier. Matt, I was thinking of either an NBA player or a collegiate player, maybe a Hoosier, maybe not a Hoosier, that Bryson Tucker reminded me of. And it was kind of tough. There aren't that many mellow, low-key super talented wings out there in the basketball world. Uh, yeah. They usually make themselves heard loud and proud, uh, right? Like uh, Terrence Shannon, for example, is a similar build, uh, at least going into his freshman, sophomore season than Bryson Tucker was. Uh, they could not be more opposite as far as basketball players are concerned. Um, but then I was watching uh, an NBA game earlier this week, and I was like, you know, there's a guy who used to play in the Big Ten. But he was he he wasn't very highly regarded. He wasn't very hyped as a basketball player, even though right now he's in the NBA and he's been in the NBA for a few years. And I was like, you know, I could I could kind of see this. And it's gonna be an underwhelming comparison for those of you listening. But for those people that know ball, they'd be like, wow, this guy could really help Indiana this upcoming season. And my comparison for 
Bryson Tucker is actually Karis LeVert. And I know it's a bit of an out, 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 outside the box uh, comparison, a bit uh, out of left field. But I remember some of the same conversations people were having about Karis LeVert early in his collegiate career. He's talented. He can do things on both, both ends of the floor. He has a good attitude. Uh, but you know, it just might take a little time to really find his groove, to find his niche. And then, of course, LeVert ended up being an excellent player by the time uh, his Michigan career came to an end. And he had a refined skill set that really has paid off massive dividends for him as far as the NBA is concerned. Uh, I know it's not a conventional one. I do like the uh, the Troy Williams uh, mention earlier. I think they're a little bit different. You know, and I don't see too much Victor Oladipo and Bryson Tucker. I really don't. Uh, maybe uh, he'll prove me wrong and end up being one of the most well-known Hoosiers uh, by the time uh, Tucker's time at IU is done. But, you know, I know there's some people listening going to be like, oh, man, that's Gary Silver. We can do so much better. But guys, I'm telling you, if, if that works out, you're going to be really happy. Uh, yep. Matt, as far as uh, as far as you're concerned here, looking at Bryson Tucker, is there anybody that you've watched in the basketball planet uh, that reminds you a little bit of uh, Bryson Tucker in his game? Oh, this is tough. Um... Larry Bird. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Robbie, uh, Robbie Avila. That's who. You, yeah. That's who it is. Yeah. Reminds me of Bryson Tucker. You look at the bar. Um, from the people I have watched in my entire yeah. life, I will say, um, actually, no, we'll, we'll go back. Okay. We'll go, we'll go, I'll go an IU player that okay. kind of reminds me very similar to him. Um, Colin Hartman. Ooh. What do you Colin mean? Colin Hartman. <clears throat> I, he's just a very versatile player, not going to, um, on a good team. Ooh. Plays a really high, you know, plays a really mm. impactful role Very at a cool. high level. Yeah. Yep. Um, not going to take over games, mm -hmm. but you'll look up at the end of the game and be like, wow, he has 14. Yeah. Like, yeah. when did he get 14? Right. Um, and then, off, I, I mean, just based off his off the ball stuff, mm -hmm. I, it really reminds me of, of, of Hartman. So. That's a fair. That's a fair point as far as the off-ball movement. You know, the, you know, cup. You know, those Tom Crean teams seem to always have one or two guys that uh, that kept moving no matter what. You know, it could have been Hartman, could have been OG, it could have been Troy Williams. Uh, that that backdoor baseline action was kind of a staple of a uh, staple of Tom Crean's uh, teams, whether they were good or bad. Um, and so, yeah. uh, and so, you know, we'll see uh, if Bryson Tucker can add that. Uh, to Indiana's team next year. And to your point, if you have pass first guards on the floor who can see the court, that is exactly the kind of box that Trey Galloway checks. Um, you know, and that's going to be the box that someone like uh someone like I think Connor Hickman would check if he came in, uh, even though he's more of a, a taller player, uh, not necessarily thought of as a pass first point guard. He's a good passer. And then of course we've seen the passing game of Malik Renew develop over the last couple of years. So uh, putting those skills together is uh, is something we could definitely see come to fruition as far as day one is concerned. Um, for me, my answer to this is, I think he really elevates Indiana's transition game uh, from day one. Uh, in other words, you know, Indiana, I think, is going to be good as far as handling their assignments defensively. Right? You're telling me, hey, I've got Trey Galloway out there. I've got Malik Renew out there. I've got Anthony Leal, right, 15, 20 minutes off the bench. Um, then you talk about, look, there are, you know, I mean, I didn't even talk about Gabe Cups, right? You know, you know, we know the defensive growth that Gabe Cups made uh, in the second half of last year. I don't see an issue with Indiana doing their job defensively. But a couple of issues they've had is grabbing the rebound, which I think Tucker will help there, and then finding quick offense off of stops. You know, Xavier Johnson, we won't see him play a game for the Hoosiers again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, it would sort of be a guy dribbling into a dead end, uh, trying to force something because he was pressured. You know, Indiana struggled quite frequently, especially early in the season on the two-on-ones, the three-on-twos, converting those into baskets or free throws. And even if Tucker comes in for 15, 20 minutes off the bench, I could see him really helping the Hoosiers in that aspect from the first game of the season. 
put the defense in compromised situations, turn off defense into offense quickly. If he can do that, I think the Hoosiers uh, will be in a really, really good position going into year one and year two of uh, the Bryson Tucker era. Uh, Matt, and, and, and as we wrap up, you know, we'll talk about McKenzie and Baco in a sec here, but if you think about Bryson Tucker year one, uh, what are some of your expectations just as far as goals, objectives? Do you think he's going to start? Do you think he's going to come off the bench? Uh, do you think he's going to be a double-digit scorer, a defensive force? Uh, what What are some of your expectations for Bryson Tucker in your one? Solid role player from day one. I don't know if I can really put it. I mean, with six roster spots open, I don't know what his role is exactly going to be, whether it's going to be starting or mm-hmm. not, I'm going to assume it's probably not going to be starting start. from day one, you know, but, you know, if let's say we have four roster spots open, he might have to. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, what was the other part of that question? Uh, That's it. Just year just, one. Like, what? anything yeah, else? As as I think he, right again, I think he grows into a role as the year goes on. Yeah. Um, and becomes a bigger part of the team. And he and might end up being the one player that we get that could truly raise the ceiling of next year's squad, Mm. depending on, on how good he is from, from day one to the end of the season. Like he is a guy that I could totally see, you know, taking off in about, you know, mid January, really figuring it out in the height of big 10 play and becoming, I use, X factor in winning games down the stretch and hopefully making it back to the NCAA tournament next year. I could also see him basically playing five minutes a game. So I, it, it's, it's really just depends on what's the overall talent level that the staff decides to, to go out and get um, and what kind of, you know, positions do they key in on? Obviously they have to get a guard. They're talking about possibly getting another big, who do they get after that? Because that'll really decide his role, right? Because he plays a position that we really don't have anybody else um, that plays that that position naturally on the roster. So he's going to get minutes right now, irregardless of how ready he is or not. Yeah, and and that's how it should be, right? When you go out and get someone of that caliber, uh, you want uh, you want them to you know, see the court. It's really the best way. Uh, they can improve, they can develop. You just don't want to put too much on their plate. I think that sweet spot uh, for him is that 20 minute per game type of role, 20 to 20, 20 to 24 at the start. Um, that's kind of what I would see. I love seeing Indiana have some depth at the wing position. It's been a while. Uh, so you know, you're telling me Mbako, you're telling me Tucker, uh, you certainly hope he can add maybe someone like Tony Perkins, who uh, who I think will feature off the wing, especially if he does commit to the Hoosiers. Now we're uh, now we're cooking with some with some uh, with some fire uh, with some some fish hot, grease. Uh, there we go, hot green fish grease. There you go. Uh, and that's what I think. Uh, that's what I think is around the corner here for the Hoosiers. I like I like what I'm seeing here, and I also like how IU fans reacted. They didn't throw a party, they didn't celebrate, they didn't throw a parade. Uh, Bryson Tucker knows what uh, this coaching staff can do for him uh, as far as NBA hopes and dreams. Uh, and now Indiana is going to get right back to business as far as re-recruiting their own players and hitting the portal. We're going to talk about Mackenzie and Baco in a sec. But first, it's time for who won the week this past week in IU sports. And the Indiana women's basketball team, their season came to an end. But it was a hell of a ride as far as that game against South Carolina was concerned. We'll have more in-depth thoughts on the women's basketball team later on this offseason. But uh, the Hoosiers really, really laid it all out there on Friday uh, against the uh, against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Uh, Matt and I said it on this podcast last week, and we didn't think it was going to happen like this. But we did say, this Hoosier team, even if they may not win, which they didn't, uh, they're going to have you tuning in for the end of the game. And yeah, everyone, they, they fought their ooh, butts off. Everyone oh was God. watching that in the basketball world because you had that standalone window of like 5 o'clock Eastern time. Um, I don't think too many people were pumped up about the uh, Sweet 16 games going on in the men's side just yet. Indiana, South Carolina is heading, uh, heading for a frantic finish, and that's what you got. And, hey, look, this is why South Carolina is undefeated. This is why they're one of the best teams in the country. Even in these moments where someone's trying to knock them off, uh, they hit one or two key shots in order to keep them ahead um, and ultimately get the win. Uh, somehow, a South Carolina team that hasn't lost a regular season game 
going back to last year is uh, a bit of a under underdog quiet quiet story in the women's final four uh going into this weekend i think everyone's talking about iowa everyone's talking about yukon um south carolina just doing their business and don staley keeps winning uh the hoosiers have uh, have so much to be uh proud of they left it all out there one of my favorite seasons that i've witnessed as it relates to IU sports uh, they got crushed by stanford to start the season Everyone was like, oh, my gosh, Grace Berger's gone. The sky is falling. Um, they just patiently, methodically navigated the season, beat Iowa in Assembly Hall, had a couple of other really impressive wins. That Sweet 16, uh, that round of 32 victory to get to the Sweet 16 is one we'll always remember as far as their gritty win over Oklahoma. Uh, amazing year. And uh, if you haven't watched the postgame press conference yet, I highly, highly advise that you do so. Um, have a box of Queen Mitch ready at the side. Folks, a reminder, if you enjoy our show, leave us a review, tell a friend, share our links. Your support really helps us grow this podcast and reach more passionate IU fans such as yourself. If you want to find us on social media, head over to Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube to find us at Indiana HQ or at the Hoosier Sound. Matt, Mackenzie Mbaco is back. The Big Ten co-freshman of the year. Some folks thought he was going to be a one-and-done candidate all season, but he decommitted from Duke. Picked Indiana over Kansas last year. Had a had a had a fascinating 23-24 campaign where he averaged 12 points, four rebounds a game. When he was good, he was really, really good. He was a game-changing player on both sides of the court. But he had some momentary lapses throughout the whole season, from the first game to the last. Mike Woodson does what you have to do in this day and age. He wins the re-recruitment of his own player, gets Mackenzie and Baco back on the Hoosiers. Matt, what's your reaction to seeing number 21 back in an IU jersey this upcoming season? I am very happy, but also very surprised. Because I don't know how many of you knew this, but there was rumors around January of last season that he was transferring and he was out and didn't want to play anymore. Um, so I fully went into this off season expecting him to at least test the NBA waters and put his name in the transfer portal. He did neither, <laughs> um, and is deciding to come back. So blew my expectations out of the water. Thankfully, um, I think this is setting up for him to have a absolute breakout season as far as national attention goes. Again, you have a really, 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 I cannot underestimate, under, I cannot underestimate, underestimate, or no, that's not what I'm trying to say. I, I can't stress this mm. enough. Emphasize enough. Yeah. I can't emphasize this enough. Yeah. The 2024 class sucks. They're terrible. They're so bad. I'm talking like the top two guys dylan harper and and ace bailey would be late up you know eight nine late tens teens. yeah yeah, yeah late, you know digits. early teens late single digit picks and a normal draft class year yeah and that's the top guys in in, in this class so and Baco can really play himself into serious yeah serious lottery Legit. consideration this next year i you know with the the shots he's going to be able to get on this roster um he's obviously one of our better three points sh shooting threats as the season went on he was the most consistent in my opinion from outside um hopefully he gets some friends that can also shoot the three hmm. um to kind of help him out with floor spacing wise but you know we kind of saw him fully blossom as a player late on to the end of the season I don't know why he can't be a, a 18 point per game guy. I agree. All year next year. I agree. From the wing position, playing the four, being able to make his own shot, but also just being an absolute menace, being ran off screens, curls. Yep. Um, you know, you can do so much with a guy like Mbako who can score at all three levels. Um, and I think if he gets to play the four a little bit more, he'll be able to get the ball 
in the post mm -hmm. and show a little bit of his playmaking ability and his post up ability, obviously, because he's from the post. Um, yeah. I think he's, you know, he's a guy that could develop something out of the post, like whether it's a, a, a post fadeaway or, yeah. or, you know, a, a, you know, an up and under move or something yeah. like that in the get post, fouled, go to the line, get fouled, go to the line. He's a good free throw shooter. I think the more he touches the ball next year, the better the team is. Um, especially given the fact that again, he's a five-star talent um, could have been a one and done um, coming back for a second year and has that entire year of experience under his belt. You know, there's no reason why he can't be a first team, all big 10 guy next year. Yeah. Really? I agree. No. Completely agree. Um, especially e e I'm sorry, even in an expanded conference. Um, this to me is, is a win for Mbako. It's a win for Mike Woodson. To win for IU basketball fans, to win for everybody, like nobody loses here. Like I don't know, like no. there's a lot of sleazy people in college basketball right now. There are a lot of people with misguided intentions right now in college basketball. Like this is something where, and Khalil Ware said, like Mike Woodson is somebody who stays true to his word, and that's why Khalil Ware is going to be a first round pick in June. Like whoever is in charge of advising McKenzie and Baco, I tip my cap to them. I don't know if it's his parents. I don't know if it's somebody else, family, friends, whoever. Uh, maybe people he met on campus his freshman season. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, look, uh, those are your brothers for life. Um, I don't know who's in charge of helping McKenzie and Baco make decisions. Maybe it's nobody. Maybe it's McKenzie himself. I tip my cat. The NBA is an easy leap to make when you're at this stage in your career. You've probably been an elite basketball player for, what, 10 years at this point? High school, middle school. Yeah. AAU, yeah. everyone thinks you're a superstar, big man on campus, whatever. You get all the attention, you get all the accolades, you get all the hype. To tap the brakes and say, let me get better for a year. Mackenzie and Baco's party, way to go. And then there's the Indiana side, where, where Mike Woodson, as you pointed out, Matt, you know, you've got to bring your players back if you want to win in college basketball well, that's going to be the case even after covid seniors move on after the end of next season i don't you know not not to interrupt you but i oh, haven't interrupt you here i i think some same. people some people yeah. say that you know you have to bring you know a majority of your players back i don't think that's the case i what i do think is the case is you have to have a core yes. you have to have you have to have three significant guys come back on your team and then surround them with new pieces yes. kind of to, you know, fix the holes that the roster had previously and bring out the strengths that the roster had previously. So for instance, what would be our core, Nathan? That would be Trey Galloway, Galloway that would be and Mbako and Renew. So again, that's, you know, if you want to look at it, that's the three, four and the five yep. going into next year or if you want to look at it as a two, three, and four, that's okay. I want to puke a little I bit. I look at it happens, as your best, your best. It's your three best players. From your best year's ball year. handler, your best wing, and your best big. That's just the three best players from last year. Straight yeah. up. That's that's what it is. It's the three best players from last year's team returning for the Hoosiers for year insert whatever year they've been here for. And, you know, it's Renew's third. It's Baco's second. It's Trey yeah. Galloway's one fifth. Um. Yeah. But you know, returning for their for for another year with the same head it. coach, with the same staff, you have to keep these guys because then you can go out and go get a guy like a Kanan Carlisle, or yes. you can go get a guy like a Connor Hickman, or you can go get a guy, you know, you can go Tony get Tony Perkins, people, Amari Tony Williams, Perkins. Whatever. Yeah, you can go get guys that really complement each other. Um, and from what you saw last year and and elevate the roster entirely you don't need to return nine guys you don't need to return 10 guys you just really need to sweet return spot. three to four and it's and a sweet spot good. yeah yeah and, and you know you think of uh a side effect to to that statement you just made right as i as mckenzie and Baco tries to build his nba draft case for 2025 this upcoming year is going to give him a chance to be a teacher to be a leader to yeah. help out someone like Bryson Tucker, to help out someone who uh, comes into the program via the transfer portal, maybe like Kanan Carlisle uh, or, or you know, Amari Williams or Tony Perkins. You might say, well, Tony Perkins doesn't need to be taught by Mackenzie Mbako. Well, Mackenzie Mbako knows the system. And sometimes it's a little bit easier 
to hear it from a teammate than it is to hear it from Mike Woodson cursing at you. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> like this is where uh, all of a sudden now you fast forward a year and Mackenzie and Baco going through pre-draft interviews, going through the combine, going through uh, things like that. He can talk about how in year two he made this growth, not just as a player, but as a leader, as a teammate, as a potential captain. We'll see if uh, he actually gets that designation this upcoming year, but I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. And and this is why exactly I sit here and say, like, after a crazy year, a weird year, a twisty, turny year with Mackenzie and Baco, Mike Woodson and the staff were able to convince him, like, bro, Indiana is the best place for you. It's going to be for just one season, right? Like, there's no way Mackenzie and Baco is on this team in two years. There's no shot. Either he's in the NBA or he's on another, or he's at another program. But, like, this upcoming season, Mackenzie and Baco, you know, believed in and is trusting Mike Woodson to get him into the league, to help him elevate from year one to year two. The fascinating thing is, you look back, Mike Woodson's Woodson's hot zone is a two-year project, right? We talked about it with Bryson Tucker, but Trace Jackson Davis is a two-year project. Trace Jackson Davis is going to be getting a fat extension soon. Yes, he is. I'm not joking. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Trace, if Trace Jackson Davis signs a $60, $70, 80000000 contract in the near future. All right? Like, that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. Miller Cobb, I thought, showed good improvement over a two-year two window. Yeah. Okay? Uh, Xavier Johnson. There's some ups and downs. But I think there was there was something to that. Uh, Khalil Ware was in, <laughs> was an accelerated accelerated program, but a lot of other players have really thrived under Mike Woodson in this two year growth plan. And I think Mackenzie and Baco sees that and says, "Okay, you know that's something I can believe in. That's something I can trust. That's something I can have the faith in." And this is a really strong indication in years to come. I don't know how long Mike Woodson's going to be here. But to be able to convince Mackenzie Mbaco to come back, Trey Galloway to come back, and Malik Renew, that's a massive victory for Mike Woodson. And I think you see Hoosier fans responding that way. It doesn't mean that Malik Renew is going to be an all-conference player or Mbaco is going to do that or Galloway is going to do that. It doesn't matter. But when you look at the teams in the Final Four right now, they all have players who have been with the program for some time. Now, they brought in some transfers, don't get me wrong, but they also have some Everybody players, has transfers. But, yeah. but they've also got some players that have that have seen some things for a few years, even if even if that means they're not the best players on that team. Right? Like, like uh Cam Spencer is a very, very valuable player for UConn. He's a transfer, but they clinging. also have, but they also have, you know, they also have players on their team, whether yeah. it's last year or this year, that have seen some things that have been through the grind, whether it's in the Big East or whether it's in college basketball. We've seen it. You wouldn't have to talk about Purdue. You guys understand that, uh, seeing that firsthand. So this is a huge victory for Mike Woodson. Having Galloway and Baco and Renew back seals the fact that you will have three quality starters in your lineup going into next year. Of course, as Matt and I are going to talk about shortly, Indiana's going to have to add a few more pieces. But first, it's time for our social media shout-out. Folks, you can find us on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube at Indiana HQ or at the Hoosier Sound. Not on Instagram, we're not Indiana HQ, but what are we? Indiana.hq. You can find us there. Lots of content coming your way. We're up and at it as far as the latest news is concerned. Make sure you give us a follow, like, subscribe to our stuff. Give us a retweet if you like what you see. If you don't like what you see, let us know. We'll, we'll do our best to figure that out, fix that, and make, make stuff happen. Our last couple of podcast episodes have really caught fire here. People love hearing Transfer Portal news, and that's exactly where we're going to go next. Matt, there's a lot happening as it relates to the portal and the Indiana Hoosiers. Connor Hickman visited Indiana last weekend, took uh, probably a five-minute walk down to campus uh, to check things out over the weekend in Indiana. Kanan Carlisle and Amari Williams have incoming visits. Indiana has made the shortlist for Corin Johnson out of Washington, for Tony Perkins out of Iowa. I'll let you pick any of those guys to talk about something completely off off that list. 
Uh, the Hoosiers are doing big things in the portal. Uh, what do you like as far as what you're seeing in Indiana's portal strategy over the last week or two? I like Kanan Carlisle. Um, I think he's a guy that could really blossom in year two. I mean, a la Mbako style. Um, again, it's former five star ish yeah. recruit. Or Khalil Ware style, right? I mean, it's Khalil Ware right? style, yeah. But I mean, Khalil Ware, he, I don't, mm, I don't know. You only will ever see a Khalil Ware again because Khalil had top 10 talent and was used like he was, uh, you know, Evan Fitzner. Bench, yeah. So, you know, I, 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 I'm not wrong. So, I, I, I don't think we'll ever see somebody like him again, but. Kanan Carlisle is a guy that could be a top 10 guard in the Big Ten next year. Just based off of talent alone. That's even with Michi Johnson going back to Ohio State. Um, I, I He's a guy that could play, you know, the point guard for IU, but, you know, really plays well off the ball. Um, obviously can still share and dish it himself. I mean, he shot 32% as a freshman from three and a hundred shots. A lot of them were really stupid. Um, and so you'd think as a sophomore, you know, naturally with he'd improve that just a little bit, um, just based off a of shot selection. And 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 he was an important player on what was a really underwhelming yeah. Stanford team. Yeah. Honestly, but, can I be honest? Like yeah, yeah, Stanford yeah. basketball and Indiana football. Kind of have a lot of similarities, right? Like Jalen yeah. Lucas is now in Florida State, and Jordan Shaw's on Washington, and uh, AJ Barner went to Michigan, right? Like, <laughs> when all the good programs want your guys after your coach gets fired, that says a lot. Yes, and so I, Stanford was was among, if not the worst yeah, coach. Stanford has like team. five guys that elite programs are going after. There's like Maxime Renaud and Brandon Angel yeah. and Andre Stoyakovic and Kanan Carlisle. And we'll nail down the pronunciation of his first name, guys. But we'll, we'll figure that. Out. Hey, we'll, we'll you you get that respect once you commit to the once you commit to Indiana. How do you how do you say it correctly? Uh, we'll figure it out once he commits to Indiana. All right, okay. great. All right. <laughs> I for me, I just look at his name and it reminds me of Tony Kanan. Yeah, so that's yeah, why yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. I, I look at his name and I think of Kane and the waving flag singer. And uh, you we're, know. Gonna, we're gonna call him Car. I know I'm not. I know I'm not pronounced Carlisle. I know I'm not. I'm I'm not saying. Oh that. man. The, well. The sub- the I'll see if I can. Never leaves you. All right, oh, man. Um, but to your point, right? Like electrifying, yeah. like electrifying garden. If he comes to him, man, he you you watch him play. You know, a lot of people talk about highlights, right? Like you you want to watch him yeah. throw down crazy dunks and threes and game winning shots. I mean, it's fine. What? What? Like watch the other stuff, and it's like also really impressive. Like he's got a good attitude on the court. He's running up and down. He's uh, making some slick passes, even if they're not caught cleanly or don't exactly translate to a shot. Carlisle, Carlisle could be a lethal player on this basketball team next year. And uh, all of a sudden, Indiana could be having three or four guys in the first round of the 25 draft. Uh, really? Seriously? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Um, who else do you see, Matt, as far as Indiana's uh, pursuit here and their recruiting efforts that, uh, that, has, that has your attention? Well, I, again, I really want Connor Hickman. Yeah, uh, please. What's taking so long? I, 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 like I said, just throw him in assembly hall and throw the keys away and then just give him basketball and some supply, like some cliff bars. All right. He's stuck there until the season. All right. No, I mean, get him some like baked, uh, baked cookies, right? You have to give him the Bloomington experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You give him some baked and, and some know. mother bears and Leo That's can it. sneak him in mother bears, his mother bears. That's deal. what I'm saying. You know? uh, there you yeah. go. The Malik, Ren- the Malik the Malik burger later Cliff Bars later Cliff yeah Cliff Bars later um Amari Williams is an interesting one yeah um now he's a dr- transfer from Drexel six ten center mm-hmm. um really 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 elite defensive big like he's such an a, a amazing shot blocker it jumps off the film immediately upon watching this dude yeah um offensively meh meh he, he could do some stuff but he's well, not exactly Mike Woodson kind of thrives in helping bigs score yeah 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 no, that's 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 facts uh um, 
You know, I, side note, uh, I've seen some whispers of Kenny Payne possibly joining the staff. <sighs> wouldn't wouldn't be totally opposed to that. Um, because he's a guy that's been known for working in and and developing bigs. I want game coaches on the staff, man. We we do fine with the recruiting. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I want, I want, but like I if want... we're not gonna add a game coach to the staff, I don't mind adding another guy that has head coaching experience, Give even me though some it was dude terrible. Got fired for no reason, <laughs> and uh, please uh, let let us add him to our or let's add him to our coaching staff. No, I, I wanted wanna, the guy I... who got fired from Southern Illinois, and somehow Chris Holtman picked him up at DePaul. And uh, yeah, I'm like, you you couldn't make a call, make a phone call, Scott yeah. Dolson, Mike Woodson, I mean, whatever. Uh, but I liked your I liked your your guys that you mentioned there, as far as Amari Williams, as far as uh, you know, some of these players that could come in. Yeah, Hickman would <clears throat> help Indiana's experience, uh, no question about it. Help the shooting from downtown. Um, there's just no doubt about that. I'm the last time I... we talked, Jalen Blackman wasn't on the portal, right? Either. Uh, it was like that evening uh, when he yeah. entered. So I'm yeah. I'm very much interested in seeing him uh, visit Bloomington. I hope that visit gets scheduled here uh, in the days to come. Uh, Indiana State lost tonight in the NIT championship. Regardless of the result, um, you can certainly think that uh, their coach will be uh, on the receiving end of some phone calls. Uh, you should for... be. <laughs> For a job and uh you know we'll see where isaiah swope and ryan conwell among others uh we'll see what they choose to do um as far as their future is concerned i definitely wouldn't mind seeing one or both of them in an indiana uniform uh, i did <laughs> i was telling matt earlier it's kind of interesting when players list those you know 25 schools that are in contact with them and you know if you know if you're even slightly interested you make the call and you reach yeah. out I noticed that Indiana was not one of the many, many schools listed in pursuit of Jamie Kaiser, the Maryland, uh, the Maryland player who transferred out somebody that Indiana did uh, look into as far as a high school player was concerned, you know, in his high school days. Um, and he was on Indiana was on his shortlist. Um, but Mike Woodson seems to be looking in a different direction as far as, as far as that's concerned. Uh, Gibson Jimerson from St. Louis is somebody who caught my, I attention. love him. Yes, He caught my attention during, uh, during uh, all those um, Atlantic 10 games that I yeah. had on TV. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, look, I got the big 10 on one screen. I got maybe uh, the Ivy uh, on ESPN plus somewhere else during the weekends. And then bang, we got St. Louis and uh, Duquesne or St. Louis and Archie at Rhode Island yeah. or St. Louis yeah. and Dayton. Right. And, and there's Gibson Jimerson just, uh, you know, navigating the floor perfectly uh, for the Billikens. And uh, and uh, you look at somebody who's big, combo guard, can rebound the basketball. Uh, he, can, he, can, uh, he can tell you some stories, given that he's been in college basketball for five seasons. And next year will be a sixth. He has one year of eligibility remaining. Uh, that's somebody I sit here and I go, okay, yeah, please uh, see if you can get him in an IU uniform little bit of everything as far as Jimerson's concerned. The 85% free throw shooting stands out to me personally. Um, I like those being automatic. And, of course, a 40% three-point shooter, uh, certainly music to our ears. Yes. Uh, so, all in all, you know, definitely a lot of interesting names getting thrown around. This is the time of year where, you know, the 12th guy you mentioned is really fascinating. And, like, Tony Perkins is somebody who's been a very, very reliable player in the Big Ten for multiple seasons now and we're just like burying him in like the 57th minute of our podcast or wherever we are right he's now. just not a good shooter and i just don't okay i okay rant incoming <laughs> i get there are but... other aspects of the game matt okay there are other aspects of the game and you know what he's got lawrence north blood coursing through his veins and 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 while that did not work for cj gone it has worked for Donovan McCulley. So all I'm saying is, let's get another guy in as a tiebreaker and uh, we'll figure out. But he can't shoot, Nathan. He can't. Oh, my God. And Look, he plays for the one offense in the Big Ten that's known for shooting, and he can't shoot. He can score. The game's not about 
Who hits more threes? Okay, but he needs the spacing to score, and that's 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 the issue. Because if you're gonna go get a guy that can't shoot, you gotta go get guys that can allow him the space. You know what I didn't like about the Perkins though the last yes. couple of years. So somebody who right, he's he's a he's a thirty plus minute per game guy. Yes, it's kind of fascinating. I I noticed this in both both of his ma- big years at Iowa the last couple of years. Like he got better during conference play, and I don't know yes. how many players can say that. Right, he's somebody who really did shoulder the load. Um, on, on like two very different Iowa teams, right? A couple of years ago, it was Chris Murray. It was uh, up and down the court, a lot of points, uh, a lot of threes. And then this past season, they kind of really got comfortable with mid-range and inside looks. And uh, they almost found their way into the tournament with nobody. I mean, Owen Freeman had a solid season, but man, that Iowa team was really gasping for talent uh, this past year. And uh, they almost found a way to get it. I, it's just one of those things. You know, he was he was like a couple years ago, 12 points per game, but 13 and a half during conference play. Last year, 14 points a game, but 15 and a half in conference play. I'm like, okay, I can get into that. Because when you get into Big Ten play, it's those consecutive games, right? And especially now this year, it's going to be not only going to the barn and going to Kohl Center, but you're also going to be going to freaking Seattle or to Eugene, right? Guys who play well against high major teams, sign me up. Okay. But he can't shoot. It just feels like you got Hickman, right? Hick- Hickman, Hickman fixed that. No, fixes but it that. feels like it's like okay, finally we have a chance to go get a point guard that can kind of do some things offensively. And now I'm not saying that Tony Perkins can't because he averages 14 points per game at a big another Big Ten school. I'm not saying that. But I just feel like we could move away from the mold that is. <laughs> but you know what that means, right? That was Xavier Johnson, and we're it, and we're like, all right, let's move on from Xavier Johnson, and let's just get the slightly upgraded version of him. Like let let's get the the guy that played Indiana high school basketball version of of Xavier Johnson. Like you do you understand that? Like to me, they scre- they scream to be the same player. Just obviously, Tony Perkins is a little bit better at everything, but. I don't know. I, I, you could, you could go get a Jalen Blackman and start him, who, who's an absolute freak scorer. You could go get a, 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 a Leland Walker, who, who, same kind of thing, freak scorer. You could go get some of these guys that could go take over the games from the guards perspective. And I look at Tony Perkins, and I'm like, hey, he's not going to take over a game. I just want good players, and I feel like there were many times last year. Where I watched Perkins and I said, wow, like a couple years ago, they surrounded him with really good pieces. He ended up being pretty effective. You know, last year he goes out, he was like, he has 16 against, uh, he has 16 against Creighton. He has 25 at the Cole Center. He's 24 against Purdue. He has, you know, <clears throat> 20 point games against Maryland and Ohio State. And I'm like, Perkins is somebody, regardless of what you think about, you know, his, his strengths and weaknesses. He's somebody that can check a lot of boxes on a given night. You know, like he's somebody who could grab some rebounds for you, right? Even if he's not putting up 15 shots, he's somebody who can, who can, who can, uh, who can fill the box score from a rebounding standpoint, moving the basketball, shooting free yeah. throws, playing defense. You don't, it, you know, when you don't have to rely on a guy every single night to score, you would hope that he contributes in other ways. And that's where Tony Perkins has stood out. We'll see. He's 29% from three. Hey, he was, he was 35% two years ago. But that was in an offense that actually gets their players good shots. 35% two years ago. And I, look, Indiana got good shots two years ago. Miller Cop took open threes. Jalen Hichafino found his groove. Now, it was a journey. It was a circus. I'm going to sit here and still throw a temper tantrum. I, he hit 23 <sighs> threes last year. 23! Let's uh, take a couple minutes here. Um, if uh, Of all the guys that Indiana's looking at right now in the portal, who's the one guy that you wanted uh, in an IU uniform? The one guy yeah, I want yeah, to know, yeah. more than anybody else. Yeah. 
Um, uh, uh, Javon Small. Ooh. We haven't heard much from him recently, like as far as the news and stuff is concerned. He seemed like are we are are we talking about transfers that are in the portal or transfers that we're targeting? I, I'm even gonna say not only in the portal, but players that Indiana are actually yeah in contact with or, okay, or players that are in the yeah. Then Javon, Which, yeah, small small counts very much so in that conversation. Um, <clears throat> it's not Tony Perkins, all right? So you can. <laughs> He can settle down. I'm gonna say Cannon Carlisle, and then right after him, Connor Hickey, because to me, like, you need Carlisle for just the skill and the ability. And look, I know he's not in his fifth year or whatever. Okay, everyone, calm down. That's where Connor Hickman comes in. Okay, and obviously he's a catch and shoot guy, perimeter elite player out there uh, on the arc. It's just if you lose the Hickman battle from a recruiting standpoint and he goes to like Nebraska because rink mast went to Bradley and then went to Nebraska and had a decent season. Like that to me is worse than any loss that Indiana, like Indiana could lose every game next year and losing Connor Hickman to Nebraska or to Wisconsin or something would, would be the worst, would be the worst pie on the face in the face L that Indiana basketball has taken since Kelvin Sampson. Oof. So that's all I'm saying. You cannot lose that battle. It, look, if Hickman wants to visit elsewhere, he be my guest. He better be in an Indiana uniform next year. Matt, as we wind down here on this Thursday night, any final thoughts in the basketball world? Mbako back. Bryson Tucker is a Hoosier. Lots of portal contacts. You can go any which way you want. Oh, man. Um, can we get these guys on campus, please? Uh, and thank you. Um, I I need transfers. I don't know what the staff has to do. Six said months. if they got to kidnap some people, that's fine. You got to pull a Will Wade. Get the FBI involved. <laughs> sure. I, I, I'm getting desperate at this point. I'm not opposed. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so much talent in the portal. Um, I kind of like most yeah. of the guys right. they've reached out yeah. to. There's a couple that make me scratch my head. Um, maybe we can talk about that in the next podcast. Mm-hmm. If we haven't had, you know, if they haven't yeah. gotten there yet. There's a couple of just questionable to me. But mm-hmm. I know I, I hope that by the time this, what are we, was it was Thursday? By yeah. the time we do this podcast next week, I pray to God we have a commitment. So. <laughs> Sounds good. And then uh, before I forget, your uh, final four picks, NC State, Purdue, Bama, Connecticut. Semis and who wins it all? Oh, God. Uh, um, I think Purdue beats NC State. As much as I want DJ Burns to be in the national championship game. And I think UConn beats Bama. And then I think it's UConn beating Purdue in the final and absolutely manhandling them. And they'll go like the whole tournament without losing. No, I think they win every game of the tournament by at least 15. I agree, except I think uh, UConn's going to beat uh, NC State. I think it'd be so funny if Purdue loses to a, not, a not double digit that. seed. Like, hey, if Purdue loses a double digit seed for what, the fourth, fifth straight year yeah. in the final four? Hilarious. But this to me is more of like a, an NC State story. And, like, this is where college basketball, and I'll end on this, like, um, NC State, um, this is where this is where college basketball just beats all from a, from a, from a playoff system standpoint. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because there is simply no other sport where, like, Kevin Keats goes from fired, like, he was done. He was done. He was he out. Was literally, like, he, he was, was out done. the door. Yes. But because he won the ACC tournament, it triggered an extension clause in his contract. I think if he loses a tournament championship game, he's out. Yeah. And not only does he win the conference tournament, you know, he's just cruising right on into March Madness where the spotlight is a million times brighter than any regular season game you play. If you were an NC State fan and you just tuned in for March Madness because your team is in the field, you would have thought these guys were playing great ball all season. <laughs> and instead, this dude is not only like he has had he has had like no breaks. 
Texas Tech was a dark horse Final Four team. Yes. Yes, they were. Oakland is obviously good enough to beat Kentucky in March Madness. And then, like, their two, their two wins last weekend were pretty freaking legit. Yeah. And now he goes out and he gets Brandon Huntley Hatfield in the portal just like – is just because probably just because Brandon Huntley Hatfield's watching DJ Burns, like I can do that next year. Brandon Huntley Hatfield is is <laughs> like maybe two times the player what? DJ Burns is. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, and DJ Burns is cooking people. And this is why I'm like, please, for the love of God, whoever the like the administrators and the executives and the TV networks, like, do not ruin this beautiful game, like. You can improve it. You know, I understand there's always room for improvement. College basketball can get better, but it can also get so, so, so much worse. And what, like, I don't want, what I don't want is, you know, there's just, it's just this beautiful thing. Like, NC State goes to the ACC tournament, has to win five games in five days, and, and like, they beat their in-state conference rival, right? If Indiana beats Oregon in the NCAA tournament, we're not going to be throwing – like a crazy parade for that, even though it's a Big Ten over a Big Ten next year. NC State beat Duke in the ACC tournament and in the in the NCAA tournament to get to the final four in Duke State, sold. Tobacco Road, 10 miles away? You kidding? Duke has sold their soul to lose to in-state opponents in the it's in nuts. late on in the tournament. It's crazy. This is this is the craziest game that exists. There's nothing like it, even in a, even in, I don't know, like baseball, even if you back in as a wild card opponent, like you're still, you're still pretty respected. You're still like in a pretty small playoff field. And uh, it's like four, right? Yeah. It's like four or five teams in each league. And it's like you, you go. And even if you win the world series, like your fortunes don't drastically change that much. You're not having Shohei Otani all of a sudden go, Hey, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals went from the wild card to winning the World Series. I'm going to go sign with them. That's not that's not happening. Okay. In college basketball, that happens. <laughs> You're seeing with NC State, and they 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 took 30 games to figure it out, but they've gotten much better defensively. They found their roles on their basketball team between DJ Horn and uh, the, uh, the guard O'Connell and and DJ Burns and like. You can see the guys kind of figure out who they are. DR has found his groove a little bit here in March Man. And then Kevin Keats is kind of pull, pulling the switches and the levers and the triggers perfectly as it relates to his minutes distribution. And it's just one of those things where, like, NC State's going to go into this game. They're going to play loose, man. They're going to be going into freaking Glendale, Arizona. Like, oh, hey, what's up? I was giving interviews. I think, you know, DJ Burns is America's fan favorite right now. And, Man, I just, I just think if that's a close game with like five minutes left, it's advantage NC State. Um, but with that said, I think that they face UConn two days later and get bludgeoned. Uh, but, uh, but we'll see, we'll see how it all works out. But folks, that about wraps it up for a 326 show of the Hoosier Sound. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your support. Here are more fantastic episodes like the one you heard today. Be sure to follow us at Indiana HQ or at the Hoosier Sound to make sure you don't miss any in the future. You can also go to our website indianahq.com to find it all in one place but as always thank you for listening who's your nation and we'll see you next time